and welcome back. Now let's see how to work with binary, decimal, and hexadecimal numbers, and how to convert among that triangle, binary, decimal, to hexadecimal. So let's begin at the beginning. We're in first grade, we're learning about base 10 numbers, and you're thinking to yourself, uh, I paid money for this, let's go. No, it makes, it makes, it's important to start from the beginning to see the analogies of how you were thinking about numbers in the first place. So if you remember, the teacher taught you that you had 10 different characters, zero through nine, we're in base 10. By the way, the question of why are we in base 10? 10 fingers. Uh, if we were in Simpsons land, we'd be in base eight. Because they have four fingers. See, the whole Simpsons thing. So, if I give you the number 3271, by the way, from now on, starting now, in general, if I don't write any base, it's the default is gonna be base 10. Uh, in fact, I, I, I'm even going to write the letter out of T-E-N there because base 1-0 is ambiguous, but we'll talk about that in a couple of slides. So 3271, that means is the same as 3271 subscript 10, okay? I can even grab a pen here and just annotate that. So I'm going to write a subscript here to indicate that we're in base 10. What that really meant is 3,000s plus 200s plus seven tens, plus one one, okay? And we add them all up. So this is like a coefficient times, times this term. So it's three thousands, two hundreds, seven tens, and one. That gives you 3271 there. By the way, I could have said, look, I've got three, I got a lot of dash marks. I've got a, a lot of, uh, when you're in prison, <clears throat> not that I would know about being in prison, but if you're in prison, you might have lots of dash marks. How many days you've been there? Every day you scratch something into the wall. Well, I might have that number of dash marks. Just And that's actually base one. You've just got dash marks. It's called uh, tally counting, I think. So if I want to convert that to base 10, I'd have to count them up and then figure out how many tens, how many thousands and how many tens. It's actually an interesting process of counting from tally marks to base 10. Base two is exactly the same thing as base 10, just subtle, where I said you had 10 characters represented, 10 digits, now I have two, zero and one. And in fact, we're always gonna start from zero and count the way up. And when we get past 10, we'll see how to do this in hexadecimal by actually leaking into the letters. So if I have one, one, zero, one, now I now need to indicate that one, one, zero, one is not in base 10, it's in base two. So I would either write zero B in front of it. Okay, if I see zero B, that means I'm in a binary number. Or I can write it base, two subscript two, or I can say 1101 in binary. Okay, and I'm saying translate 1101 in binary, 1101 from base 10 to binary. That's what I'm really asking you to do. Well, how do we do this? The same way. What we do is, if you recall before, I'm gonna go back to this slide, this 10 to the three, this is the base to some power. Look at that. 10 to the zero, 10 to the one, 10 to the two, 10 to the three. The same thing here. Let's take the base to the different powers. And this, almost, in a way, gives like a column heading. You could, sometimes I even do this, like, sometimes I say, draw it like this. And I say one, two, what's two squared? Four, what's two to the three? Eight. And then I say, well, what's the value in that? And so I kind of say, I write my number, one, one, zero, one. And basically that's, it's the, the column heading times the value below it. So you see this here, it's one, eight, one, four, no twos, and one, one. It's almost like I have an analogy we're gonna see in a second. If I got boxes from Amazon, and the boxes are labeled one egg in this one, here's an empty box, I guess it's an empty box, this is the two box, this is full of eggs, it's four, and this is full of eggs, it's eight. How many total eggs do I have? So I think about that. Sometimes the boxes come empty or full, but they're either only empty or full in here, in this particular case. So eight and four and one is 13, therefore one, one, zero, one is 13. Pretty cool. A16, you got me warmed up, let's go, let's rock and roll. This is called hexadecimal. So now you're gonna say, well, Dan, I have 16 digits, but I can only, I can probably gonna use the first 10 from decimal, that's right. So what do I do? You're gonna leak into the letters. So we're gonna go A through F. So all of a sudden, A is now a number. B is a number. And the way that works is A is 10. Just keep locked that in. B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, F is 15. So I would like you to memorize that, actually. I really would like you to memorize that. I'd like to be proud to say all of my 621C graduates know that and know how to connect that. So I'm gonna ask you, here we go. A5, I made A5 in hexadecimal, written in hexadecimal, dollars today. How much money did I make? That's pretty cool. Now, 
You could also have a number, 1101 is a valid hexadecimal number. So again, we still have to indicate what our base is when I'm giving you a number. So I can either say A5, a hexadecimal number A5, what's that in decimal? That's what I'm asking doing here. Or I can precede it with 0x, just like 0b, 0x. That tells you unambiguously that that's a hexadecimal number. Or again, you can write a subscript 16. We do our same thing, we write our columns. Here's our columns. The first column was always one. The second column was always base. This is, this is, by the way, this is always base to the zero. Base to the one. So base to the one is 16. Base to the two is 256, et cetera. So what have I got? Well, A5. I write A5. What do I write over here? Zero. There are always leading zeros. We just ignore them, right? There's all the, if I said I made $12 in, in decimal, $12 today, I also made 012. I also made 0012. We just don't say the zeros. Okay, so A5, let's do it. So A times 16, oh, wait, what? Well, I have to look up. So A is 10, 10 times 16 is 160, plus one times, uh, five times one is five. 160 plus five is 165. So if I made A5 a hexadecimal, hex A5 dollars, I made 165 in decimal dollars. Pretty cool, right? Woo! Every base is base 10. Here's an alien and here's an astronaut. Ba alien says, there are 10 rocks. Astronaut says, oh yeah, you must be using base four. Uh, uh, see, I use base 10. And, and, and alien says, no, no, I use base 10. What's base four? Because in every base, there's a 10. And in fact, every base, 10 is their base. Base two, remember binary? One zero is two. Base decimal, one zero is 10. Hexadecimal, one zero is 16. So every base has a 10. And every base is that base. <laughs> All your base are belong to us. So now let's convert. We've now converted from decimal, uh, converted from binary and hex to decimal. Let's now convert from decimal to binary and to hex. So let's, let's reverse it. Shh, don't tell them. This is the same number we converted before, okay? 13. So this is an algorithm. This is actually the first algorithm that's, I mean, that was an algorithm too, but it was a little easy. This is an algorithm that has some ifs then. We have to make a decision here. The way I think of this, my analogy for this, this has worked well for students when I've taught them to. Think of the following. I've got these boxes to ship back to Amazon, all labeled in those bases. I've got a box labeled one, box labeled two, a box labeled four, box labeled eight, okay? I wanna reduce my postage. Amazon will only take a full box back. Remember, it's either full or empty. I won't take a full box back. So I first start by this. I say I got 13. And the first, the algorithm says this, is the column number, by the way, you know, to the left of this is a 16, this, I should write this better, there's a 16, there's a 32, et cetera, on the left of that. So I can start there. Let's start at 16, just, just, to, just, to be, just to go rogue for a second. I say, is the column number less than or equal to the number I have left, the number of eggs I have left to, you know, I, boy, those chickens were productive, so I gotta ship 13, eggs back to Amazon. I got a box that's 16, and I know Amazon will only take a full box. So can I fit 13 in a box of 16 and fill it up? I can't. So I write a zero here. Boop. Pretty cool. Go to the next guy. So let's try this. Then I go to the eight, and I've actually animated this for you. So I say, can I fit and fill an eight box with whatever eggs I've got left, which is 13? I say yes. Then I ask, how many of those boxes can I fill? Well, here only one. In fact, in binary, it's only going to be one or zero. But so we'll see in hex, it's actually more. We'll have to say in general, it'll be more than just one. So once I filled eight, how many do I have left? Cross it off. I say, I've got five left. Let's keep going. I go to my next box. Can I fill a four? Yes, I can. How many times can I fill the four? Only once. So therefore, I fill it up. I take, I fill the four. How many is left after I fill the four box? One left. Go to the next box. I've got a two. Can I fill the two with only one egg? I cannot, then I can't use it. So a zero in that one. Go to the next one. Can I fill a box of one, that box labeled one, with one egg? Yes, I can. How many times can I fill it? Only once is one. And I've seen now, and I, by the way, I stop when my, my sum is zero. So once I cross it off and I get my zero, I stop. And I just put zeros in the rest of these guys. If I, have, if I happen to, let's say I had eight, I'd put a one for eight and put all the zeros. I could just, you know, short circuit it and go right, right to the end. So. Converting 13 to binary, 1101 is the equivalent by going down, thinking of the Amazon egg boxes. You got it? Now let's do this 
in hexadecimal. Boop. 165. Again, don't tell the students, but this is the same number we had before. Let's go. 165, which is a decimal number. I want to convert that to, to, to hexadecimal. So start with my columns. In fact, I've added some extra ones here now. 4096. So I asked the question, can I fill a 4096 box? By the way, 16 to the 3 is 4096. Another nice thing to memorize. But I wouldn't work, worry about that one too much. I cannot. Zero. So go to the next guy. Can I fill a 256 labeled box with 165? I cannot. Zero. Can I fill a 16 box? Yes, I can. How many? See, this is the first time it's come up. How many 16s, how many 16 boxes can I fill with my 165 eggs sitting all on my floor? 10 of them. Do I write 10? No. I look up in that base what the character, the digit, that represents that is, and it's gonna be an A. I would list an A, not a 10, I'd list an A. So far, once I have A, or 10 of these 16 boxes, that's 160. How many is left? Five. And I keep going, same algorithm. This is the same algorithm for every base. Isn't that pretty cool? So now you know, I could actually ask you in an exam to convert to some base you haven't heard of before, and you should be able to do that. Same algorithm, okay? So, five left. I got boxes with one, how many can I fill? Uh, can, can I fill a box of one? Yes, I can. How many of those boxes can I fill? Five. I fill the five. I'm down to zero, and I'm done. It's pretty cool. This is fun, right? So now, of the triangle, here's a decimal, binary, hex. I can now go back and forth. That's pretty cool. I can't go this way yet until this slide. Boom. Binary to hex. So I've got some binary number. How do I convert it to, to, to hex? Here's the key. Don't make this mistake. You have to left pad it, which means add zeros to, remember you always add zeros to the left? You have to left pad it so that it's all, the length of that binary digit always is a multiple of four. If you do this, it'll work out trivially. So if I give you one, 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 four ones and a zero, convert it to hex, what have I got? Okay, one, 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 zero to hex. Well, I, it's only five, it's five. Let's add three more. Now I've got eight characters. Three zeros, four ones, and a zero. You see it right here, okay? Now this guy is eight binary digits or bits. By the way, I didn't mention binary digits, B-I and the T-S from digits becomes bits. That's why we call them bits. So, look that up. Now I have this, look that up. Here's the table. This table right here, boom, boom. Memorize this table. It will save you in time and it will make you feel like, ooh, stand a little taller. 61C, I, know, I now know I'm fluent in hexadecimal. You can ask me, boom. What's, uh, I don't know, let's look at it. By the way, the way you do this, then you look it up by fours. One of the things you're gonna notice is, Four binary digits, you remember this from before the first video, is two to the four, 16 things. Well, 16 things is this number of hexadecimal options, zero through F. One hexadecimal digit is 16 things. So there's my four, there's my 16 binary bits. I just look them up. I say, what's that? I just look it up. Boom, E. So I write E. What's zero, 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 one? I look it up. One, answer is one E, easy. You could also not do the padding, but start from the right. Okay, if you start from the right, it doesn't matter. So I go here, there's that one, 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 zero. That's my E, this is my one with some leading zeros. Okay, here's, here's an important thing. If you go from the left, you will get it wrong. One, 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 that would be F, zero, and I can't pad to the right, because that changes the number. So it is not F zero. It is not F0, very important that you see that, okay? So start from the right or pad it so that it's always a multiple of four and just then doesn't matter which way you go. Hex to binary, piece of cake. Just look them up, literally look them up, concatenate all together and then drop the leading zeros. So one E, so what's your E? There's your E, we did this already. What's your one? Drop the leading zeros, cross those off, what do you get? One, 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 zero, okay? Binary to hex. That's the triangle. Huh, what's the thing? They made the triangle in the, okay. So, four bits. Okay, I'll start for the eight. I'll start for the second bullet point here. 
8 bits is called a byte. Just historically, it's called a byte. Okay? Now, 4 bits, half of that, as you see here, this is, this is my 4-bit column. That's called a nibble. Get it? A bite. See a bite and then a, ni a nibble. See the, where's the thing? You also, you also have, I've, I've tried to advocate that two bits should be like a, like a taste. You know, I, I don't know. Nobody's ever bought onto that. One hex digit is 16 different things. We've seen that before. Two hex digits. Okay, here we go. Two hex digits. How many things can I do? If you remember before, zero to, zero, zero to FF. That's, that's, that's two hex digits. Well, what's FF? Let's do the math. Oh, it's 255. Starting from zero, that means 256 things, okay? So, or n hex digits is 16 to the n. There's another way to think about that. Now, turns out back in the days of thinking of making displays, making computer displays, okay? They realized that we need just about eight digits, eight digits, eight bits to represent a single color. Partly because the human eye can't see more than that. If I had not, by the way, they now have high-end TVs that have more of those bits, which is interesting because they can do dynamic range. There's a long, longer conversation there. But the point of this is early TVs used eight bits for each of the red, green, and blue channels. They concatenated them together to make a 24-bit color. You need to know this for your first project. Huh? See how I did that? It's an illusion. Yeah. So, 0 to 255 red, 0 to 255 green, 55 blue. You can concatenate them together. What you get is six hexadecimal digits, and that's a color. And if you've ever seen web programming or seen some color on a Mac, by the way, I could go rogue and show you this. This is probably, we'll show you this in a second. This is a color represented as six hexadecimal digits. I'm gonna go rogue because I love doing this demo. Here we go. I love this demo and the show Keep my imitation, discard my, watch this. So here we go, ready? Apple, system preferences, desktop and screensaver, desktop. I can choose a color. I can customize the color. It's a long, long way to get there. I could have done this, I could have done this, by the way, in PowerPoint. Look at this. This is RGB sliders. That, and here is the hex value. So all white is all Fs. If I take these values down, look at this. Watch how everything changes color. As I move this color around, watch this. FF0000 is all red. Huh, with the thing? If I add this color in, FFFF00 is yellow. Is that cool? So I can now adjust this and play with this, and I encourage you to find one of these things, one of these tools on the web to this, to play with the colors, to see actually colors. Here's D0367F uh, as a color here on the bottom. Pretty cool. Which base do we use? Now you've got me six guys, which one do I use? Well, decimal is obviously great for humans, especially when doing arithmetic, we know how to do that very easily. Hexadecimal, terrible for arithmetic, just terrible. But if you're looking at a string of binary digits, I could either give you a crazy long number of binary digits, or I could compact them down to a hexadecimal equivalent. By the way, would you prefer to give you that six hexadecimal digit color or 24 bits? You don't want the 24 bits, right? So you don't want that. In binary, what computers use, you're gonna be able to do multiplication, division, subtraction, all the operations you think of in all the numbers. Computers always use binary, because that's what they can do. We'll talk about that a little later in the class. Transistors only know two states, on or off, current flowing or not flowing, so they're going to use binary because of that. Regardless of how a number is written, 32, base 10, or 32, base 10, or 0x20, or 100000, base 2, or 0b100000, they represent the same number. Those are all numerals representing the same number. We'll talk about numerals in the next, next video. Please do use the subscripts or the 0x or the 0b to precede your number so it's not ambiguous. The computer knows it too. This is really cool, actually. Here's a little piece of C code we're going to see in the next lecture. But check this out. I say 1, 2, 3, 4 is my number, right? Base 10, okay? T-E-N. And I say, let's just print this out. So I print this out in percent %d for, here, you can see this here, in percent %d for decimal, percent %d, Percent X and percent O for octal, base eight. What does it print? 
124. Yeah, that's good. What else is a print? 4D2. This is a problem. It doesn't precede it with 0x or have a subscript 16. This is bad. This means if it were like, let's say, let's say this number was 16, it would print 10 and you wouldn't know what base it is. So you better add the 0x yourself when you're printing it to percent %x. You got that? Good. Percent %o, well, how does it do percent %o? Turns out that the way we do, the way computers do octal, is you lead, add a leading 0. It's a little ambiguous because you could always have a leading 0. But by having a leading 0, it tells the computer it's going to be octal. We'll see that as we put these numbers in. I can also go the other way. Watch this. I can say pass the hexadecimal number in. Look at this. I can hard code a hexadecimal number in by saying 0x. If I say percent %d, that says convert it to decimal. What does it give me? 1, 2, 3, 4. Isn't that cool? Same thing. 0b, some huge thing. Percent %d converts it binary to decimal. And here's my octal number preceded by a 0. And here's percent %d and we get 1, 2, 3, 4 for all of them. Isn't that cool? So I just took these numbers here and put them there. All right, we're done with the series of, we're done with this lecture. The next lecture, we're gonna talk about how to represent negative numbers, positive numbers in a more general way, number representation. We'll see you there.